new data mined swimwear and oh my god i just perfected my mogs recently too jesus fucking christ this is gonna be lit you can put a fucking chicken coop on your back okay so i haven't read anything about today other than a few tweets i saw the initial tweet i didn't read the wowhead article i didn't read the blue post yet not for any particular reason i was just still waking up and i i saw the original thing and uh, I know it's not out on PTR yet today, but there's a bunch of information to go through, it seems like. And some of them are are even, like, just for the game in general. Under development, the WoW Remix, Mists of Pandaria. So, we knew a few things going into this that it, like, clearly was Mist-related because it was called Time Running Pandemonium. Time Running kind of involved... Actually, I mean, if you used an a educated guess on just the name, you would have gotten this right. Time walking is them bringing back old dungeons and raids, and then they're super easy, undertuned, and like kind of worthless content. And time running implies that they would be tuned to be more difficult than that. Pandemonium, pandemonium tells you that it's mop. Some people projected that it would be challenge modes, you know, but they're literally replaying the entire expansion. You like level your character by doing the content apparently. And I mean, doing all, dude, the mist raids are actually so good, like all of them. Like, one that kind of gets underlooked is, like, that three-raid section where you do Mogish and Vault's Heart of Fear and Terrace of Endless Spring. Terrace of Endless Spring is uh, great. Heart of Fear is great. Um, well, Shaw of Fear is not a great boss, but, like, in general, those raids were really good. Uh, Mogish and Vault's is problematic, but has, like, a few cool bosses in there. And then Siege of Orgrimmar, Throne of Thunder are just, like, peak, peak stuff. Is this another Court of Star situation where you'll come to hate it? Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Where, like, Court of Stars was my favorite dungeon in Legion, but then it came back and I thought it stunk because, like, dungeons have got a lot better. Yeah, maybe you're right. I mean, it's going to be hard to tell. Like, I don't know. They could make this stuff not super challenging, and if you just, like, it's a pushover, it's going to be hard to, like, really compare. But, yeah, I mean, certainly I have a ton of nostalgia for Mop. Absolutely. So I could I could see that happening, yeah. We'll see. All right, let's read through this. So, Relive Epic Adventures is an all-new event arriving in the 10.2.7 content update. First of all, when is that coming out? So we have Dragonflight Raids Revisited. This is Season 4, specifically not 10.2.7. This is coming out on April 21st. The War Within Alpha has to be coming out, like, this week or next week. Probably next week now, I assume, because this week is halfway over and they already announced some huge shit. And then, so who knows how long this will be, right? Like, I feel like this timeline is easier to understand, but, like, who knows how long the War Within Beta will be from Alpha. I guess maybe you could extrapolate some information from previous uh expansions same thing with the pre-patch and war within it just simply says in between summer and autumn so you're assuming like late july august at the absolute earliest and then like probably august september for war within so dark so this should be what maybe late may june for this just like randomly making shit up right now something like that man am i gonna be looking forward to th i'm going to play the shit out of this man that sounds so fun even though i know nothing yet it's just, Mist was my favorite expansion. But interestingly enough, like, it's not going to be exactly how, like, it seems like you're going to be playing Dragonflight Talents. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, WoW Remix is a time-limited event which allows players to re-experience the entirety of the Mists of Pandaria expansion at an accelerated rate from level 10 through 70. All loot has been completely overhauled and has powerful new effects allowing players to shape their experience, power up, and power on. Features include accelerated leveling and content allowing you to take on nearly every quest scenario dungeon and raid. Does that include uh, challenge modes? Um, create a new WoW re... I mean, I don't see why not. And if that's the case, are they allowing you to get those transmogs again? Maybe recolors? I think recolors would make more sense. Also, recolors of those would look cool. This, for some reason, like, Blizzard has never smurfed harder than the mob challenge mode sets. Like, on average, the quality is better than, like, every tier set that's ever been released, like, across all classes. Like, some of them aren't great, but, like, the good ones are fucking insane. Okay, I'll read more. A mountain of loot. Get powerful items from everywhere. Quest, chest, creatures, bosses. Customizable items allowing you to power up as far as you can go to take on tougher content. Convert unwanted items into bronze, which can be used to upgrade items or purchase cosmetics. Okay, so like a new resource almost. Specifically time or event specific. And then keep what you collect. Take your collection of transmogs with you into War Within. So it's time limited. You won't be able to go back to this. And all the stuff you... But it sounds like we'll have like bare minimum two months to do this probably three isn't this potentially going to get the same hate that plunderstorm got because wasn't the bit with plunderstorm that 
they had rewards that people wanted, but they didn't want to do the thing, so they didn't like it. So what if like someone doesn't want to do this, but they want the reward, so they would hate it too, right? But are like, are those people able to be happy regardless? And does that matter? Big question. Who knows? Uh, available to everyone. Uh, no expansion purchase is needed, just like Pointer Storm, but a World of Warcraft subscription or game time is required to begin this fast-paced adventure through Pandaria. This means that classic players can also participate in a plethora of pandemonium by simply installing the modern live World of Warcraft client. Yeah, kind of more goes to show that, like, people have wondered why Plunderstorm wasn't free to play, because people were like, well, you made this WoW BR. Aren't you using this WoW BR to advertise WoW so you should make it free to play so other people are getting introduced to WoW? That wasn't their goal. And clearly with this, that was not their goal either. This, the trading post, the 0.5 and 0.7 patches of every, uh, patch so far in Dragonflight, clearly their goal ever since like 9.1.5 really, but definitely with the release of Dragonflight was these guys are paying a sub. Let's give them more content for their sub, right? It's not just let's release a raid, a dungeon, dungeons and PvP season, and then we'll just release new content in six months. Like they're releasing more throughout the expansion in segments to make you feel like there's more stuff to do. And they're clearly trying to get classic players to play retail, which I... My tinfoil hat theory is that's why Classic ever came back in the first place, was a long play to... Uh, it serves other purposes, and Classic is great, but as a long play to get that nostalgic WoW audience back into retail. Okay, and this is, uh, okay. And WoW trial accounts will also be able to experience the WoW remix without a subscription or game time through level 20, and then you would purchase sub. Okay. The War Within launch is going to be huge. Yeah, when we looked at the, so my take, and this is definitely a hot take, but if you looked at the WoW subscriber numbers was uh, even bigger than the classic peak of subs was uh, was Shadowlands. I think the War Within is going to peak for higher than Shadowlands, even though no pandemic. I think the War Within has that much hype. I think they've done a lot of work since Shadowlands to get classic players playing retail, and a ton in the months leading up to the War Within. I think it's going to fucking go wild. But but, but I could be wrong. I, the Shadowlands peak was pretty huge, so maybe not. But BlizzCon, this was the first BlizzCon in a long time where WoW was the main event for all of Blizzard, and it was very obvious. So you have that, you have the War Within hype, you have a growing classic and retail player base. Dragonflight has churned less subs than other expansions, even though there's like less content throughout, or there is more content, but less like uh, bar power stuff. All right, let's see. So level range 1 to 70 zone is Jade Forest. Oh, actually, let me read this. With WoW Remix, there'll be no slowing you down, and you'll be able to take on nearly every quest, scenario, dungeon, and raid right out of the gate with accelerated leveling from 10 to 70. View the chart below for the availability of each type of content. So from 10 to 70, you can do these scenar scenarios or whatever. Um, dungeons, okay, you can do those dungeons, and you can go in Jade Forest from 20 to 70. So I guess all of this will still be relevant. So whatever, okay, when you hit... Let's look at it this way. When you hit 20, you can go to the Valley of Four Winds and Krasarang Wilds and do the Landfall campaign. Um, you're going to get a bunch more scenarios, and then you can go into Stormstout. When you hit 25, you can... Oh, so at 25, you can go into Mogishan Vault. So you're going to be leveling to 70 while doing this. Is there anything at max level? Oh, the Heroic Rates. This is so fucking good. Holy shit, this is so fucking good. This is so good. This is like exactly how I would have done it. So you're like using the normal mode raids and the dungeons to level. So 25 at 30, you get Town Long and you get Siege of Nijuao Temple Dungeon. From 35, you get Dread Wastes and you get the Heart of Fear normal raid. Great raid. Heart of Fear, one of the most underrated raids in WoW. Uh, it wasn't like, it wasn't a tier raid and it wasn't its own thing. It was like a grouping of raids, very similar to tier 11 in Cataclysm, but like super cool raid. Um... And, okay, level 40, you get Veil, and then you can do Terrace of Endless Spring, which makes sense. You also get Mogus from Palace Gate of Settings, so that should be the last of the dungeons. 45, you get the Isle of Giants and the Timeless Isle, so ju you'll just... Which, by the way, Timeless Isle, I don't know how it will stand up to the test of time, but basically the Timeless Isle, when it came out, was the best version of, like, whenever you get this patch, you're going to be getting this island thing that you can interact with. And basically every island that has been good since then has been based off of the success of Timeless Isle. So Timeless Isle is like the originator for cool casual content that uh, wasn't linked to uh, raid or dungeons or anything like that. And like every island since then has, has been trying to be Timeless Isle. Then they did Isle of Thunder, pretty similar. They also made a good Isle, Isle of Thunder island. Uh, and then, if, so from level 50 to 60, you will level by doing the Isle of Thunder and Throne of Thunder's normal raid, best raid of all time. And then level 60 to 70, you'll be leveling by doing Siege of Orgrimmar, the normal raid. I wonder what the group sizes will be for this. Okay. And then when you hit 70, you at 70, you just have access to the heroic raids of all of these. 
Dude, I cannot express how... I didn't read this until now. I cannot express how excited I am for that. I think this is fucking brilliant. This is, like, so fucking good. Uh, so I wonder if you're gonna be able to do 10 and 25-man raids like you could back then. Most people will opt for 10. 25 back then was really awesome. I mean, like, we'll definitely be doing 25. You could... Hopefully, you can do both, so you can experience both. Um, certain bosses... 25-man in general is harder than 10-man. Um, but it was, there were random 10-man bosses that were way harder on 10-man than 25, but in general, 25 was way, way harder. There are going to be realm-first achievements for this mode, too. Ooh, so we have to go hard, then. Dude, that's actually interesting. I could see, like, dude, we didn't, I, I wonder how many of our players did mop when it was current. It, it's not a lot. I, maybe, maybe 10, maybe 15. So this is going to be new to a lot of them. And even if it isn't new, like right now, if you were to tell me how I would set up a raid to kill like Dark Animus or like g -Kun, like I don't, I don't remember how to do that. I, I, we would definitely wipe because like, well, I mean, it depends. Apparently this is going to be available on Friday. Are we going to like practice the shit out of these on PTR? That would kind of defeat the point of this. Hopefully they don't leave it up for too long, but I don't know. I hope these are some, I mean, these, I mean, they need to be accessible to people, but they also, hopefully they're they're like not complete pushovers so like, like i think i would it, it would be kind of lame if they brought back all of the heroic raids from mop and like literally they're all one shot piss easy fucking time walking to your dog shit right like hopefully there's like a little something where you have to learn through it but there's also only two to three months of this so it can't be like regular mythic Dol like it cannot be mythic difficulty in in wow currently um so hopefully it's a little easier than that, but I also don't hope it's not just... I mean, that's the whole point of doing something like time running, which is what this is. Time walking is... There's just nothing there, right? Outside of just zoning into the instance, basically. Uh, creating your new identity. Create a new modern World of Warcraft character to undertake your adventures in Pandaria. Collecting a variety... Oh, what am I going to play? I kind of want to play Feral or Monk to relive... I mean, I got to play Monk. I mean, obviously it's going to be Dragonflight shit, but... I mean, if, if, if it's got to be Monk, bro. You got to live in the times. I know it's Dragonflight talents and gameplay, although I wish, and they still have time to add this, I wish they did add a few iconic things from Pandaria. And I understand this isn't going to happen, but let me cook for a second. Give Druid Symbiosis. It won't be balanced. Just fucking see what happens. Give, uh, give Tanks Vengeance. Fuck it. That would, that's a lot, that's a, that's a really huge task though, because you'd have to undertune all of their abilities to scale with attack power. Actually, dude, I don't, I don't know, just make it defensive. I don't know. The, the most fun time to tank in this game was when your defensive healing and absorbs scaled off of the damage you were taking. Forget, people often focus on the damage that tanks did in MOP, but if you played tank, you understand what actually was the most fun about MOP is that every tank was completely self-sufficient if you played really, really well. If you made correct decisions, all of the tanks could completely keep themselves alive, but it was difficult. It made every class feel like a bloody cape, and that was fucking awesome. Uh, everyone that tanked them would tell you that was the best that tanking ever was, but I understand why they changed it, but they should change it back. Uh, here we go. Uh, from the realm character selection screen, players will be given the option to create a new WoW remix character beginning at level 10 which will only be able to play with characters taking part in the event. Characters in the selection screen will only be available to this. We'll have an icon next to them. Okay. Once you've created your character, you'll begin your journey in the Timeless Isle, meet up with Infinite Dragonflight, and Eternus will set you on your path. Also, this totally makes sense for why Season 4, which is coming out in two weeks, fucking stinks. Because I bet this took a long fucking time to, to make this work. And you guys were wondering, like, oh, well, like, what are they doing? Like, what are the raid designers doing? Well, the raid designers were probably exclusively getting these up back to, uh, back up to spec. And that, I mean, this, this, this is, I'm not upset about this. Like, this is one, I, I actually suggested this. Not anything close to the entirety of this, but, like, I basically said for Season 4, I wish they didn't bring back and rotate the raids. I wish they just, like, remade Throne of Thunder alone. That was my take for, like, a year. Was, like, just bring back Throne of Thunder, like, a real Throne of Thunder, instead of this rotating raid shit. And they did that and more. Uh, so definitely super, super hype. And I'm, I, just, just from reading this, and hopefully it turns out this way, I think it is definitely worth Season 4 being the way it is to get this. And, and, like, Plunderstorm combined, right? They're kind of both something that probably came from Season 4, uh, being stinky, stinky, bad, bad. Uh, definitely, definitely owns. Like, if this is as good as Plunderstorm, that would be fucking insane. And for so many people, it will be by default, because they just don't like any version of PvP. New Loot, New You. In WoW Remix, players have the opportunity... Okay, how do, how do we feel about the name WoW Remix? What's the, what's the, what's the vibe? Corny, little corny. Man, I don't, I don't I'm not mad. I'm, I'm happy day, good day. Could have maybe come up with something else. All good, though. Uh, 
players have the opportunity to collect a variety of items from just about anywhere. Quests, creatures, chests, bosses, and more. New customizable items will be yours for taking an item in each slot. You don't need to get any of spell gem sockets. These sockets come with exciting turbocharged new effects similar to trinkets. Okay, so you're going to be super powerful item or gem guy. Each time you loot... Oh, remember the last time we had really powerful gems chat in retail? That was fun. Each time you loot new items, you'll have a chance to pow uh, for powerful new upgrades, allowing you to push the limits further and faster than ever before with uncapped progression. As you progress, you'll gradually become more and more powerful as items also grant increased permanent stats. Here are just some examples of the types of gems you might find. Okay, Life Storm. Summon a storm. Call down five bolts of lightning every one second. Each bolt inflicts damage to an enemy within 30 yards. I hope it's the closest enemy to you because imagine 25 people all have this on Dark Animus and you kill mobs at the wrong time. You know what I mean? Interesting thought. Uh, during the storm, three flowers grow around the caster. After five seconds, the flowers bloom, restoring 400k health and granting haste to all allies for 10 seconds. Fits in a meta socket. Uh, thundering orb. Transform into a thundering orb. So you transform into a thundering orb, inflicting nature, dam enemies, nature damage to enemies in 30 yards or four seconds while you're an orb. So it's like... Uh, it's like that Diablo affix where you, is it, is it conduit, right? Damage taken is reduced by, you basically turn into a little Diablo conduit and you get a 50% DR instead of being immune. Your movement speed is, oh, you're slower and you're immune to loss of control effects. Oh, that could be really good. Uh, coalesce and orb. I wonder if like, so clearly a lot of this stuff is probably not supposed to be insanely balanced and like, it's like kind of fun and wacky. But I wonder if the PvP community will hate it because this isn't, like, perfectly balanced. Like, some of this stuff sounds absolutely broken. Wait, is there going to be PvP in this? Is there going to be PvP with these items? They didn't say? I mean, if they didn't say, I imagine that that wouldn't be a thing. I could also see the world where it's like, oh, PvP already got their Plunderstorm. But I don't know if Plunderstorm and PvP really go hand in hand. Like, it's literally PvP, but it's not. Example. Absolutely hate WoW PvP. Never want to do that one time. Uh, Plunderstorm is fucking insane. So maybe, yeah, just something like that. But I mean, like, once you're max level and you've done the raids, I don't know, it might be kind of fun to, like, queue up an arena or a battleground with some of this stuff. It's probably not going to be balanced, probably be super crazy, but why not, right? Uh, Max, do you think add-ons will be enabled for this or disabled, like, Plunderstorm? I have no clue. Uh, it's just a quick fun thing. I don't think it really matters. Like, like, are these going to be tuned to a level where you need fucking add-ons to do them? Like, no, like... They could have it be no add-ons. They could have add-ons. I don't really think it matters that much. This is like a this is like your own experience thing. You're not playing against other people. Highly unlikely. Especially if it's like if you're playing like an actual character. Like the reason why Plunderstorm has add-ons disabled is like you literally click into a new menu and log in. Like this sounds like you're just gonna be logging in. You know, like I I doubt could be a no add-ons testing ground. Could be. I, I'm not worried about it. I, I don't I don't think the need to have no add-ons like no add-ons is something like Plunderstorm is is good. Although, it would definitely be nice to have the ability to customize your UI a little bit more in that game. But, uh, specifically this, uh, I, I don't, I don't think it really matters. If it only enhances your experience, why not? We already, oh, there's more here? Let's see. So those were meta gems. These are tinker gems. What are the difference between meta and tinker, tinker gems? Like, uh, just certain items, I guess, have tinker slots. And certain ones have, uh, you only get one meta gem. Okay. And then here's some tinker gems. Every three seconds, build a charge of hailstorm. Upon reaching ten stacks, unleash a hail of enemy. Uh, each impact applies frost damage and numbing cold. Don't know what numbing cold means. Cold front. Uh, okay, very cold based. And it's unique equipped. You can only have one of each. You'll have multiple. Looks like you'll have multiple uh, tinker slots. Uh, your abilities have a chance to grant allies a shield, absorbing damage and applying numbing cold to all enemies. I'm assuming that's like a slow. Oh, we see it right here. Uh, thirty percent movement speed and reduces damage dealt by ten percent. Attacks remove attacking removes a stack of numbing cold. Okay, so it'll be like irrelevant against raid bosses. Um, and they also mention that here. Wildfire. <laughs> Your abilities have a chance to inflict additional fire damage and spread wildfire to additional damage. Uh, additional enemy. Uh, stack them ten times. Uh, I wonder if other people's stacks with you. Probably not. Tink Master Shield. Grant a shield absorbing damage equal to 20% of your total health. It'll regenerate after not suffering any any damage for 10 seconds. Oh, so like if you use it for no reason, it'll just reproc itself. That's fine. Um, so you probably just use that on CD. Uh, Ferber, while you're above 80... Well, I don't know what the CD of it is, though. I don't know who knows. Uh, while you're above 80% health, your attacks consume... Oh, no, it's an equip. It's not non-use. Uh, that's interesting. While you're above 80% health, your attacks consume 2% of your max health to inflict holy damage equal to the amount consumed. Yes, sir. Where in that? Love dying. Uh, your critical strikes erupt in a fire explosion, inflicting fire damage. Okay, cool. Tinker sockets. Uh, I'll just read a few of these. Ooh, cogwheel gems. Interesting. Teleports you forward 10 yards or until reaching an obstacle and frees you from all stuns and bonds. So soul shape? Isn't that literally soul shape? 
It's just Blink. Isn't Blink more than 10 yards? I th oh, maybe not. I thought Blink was way more than 10 yards, right? Blink is 15, so it's not Blink. Looks slightly above the description. Yeah, I mean, I know it's called Blink, but like Blink is a is a spell where you go farther than this. Uh, well, either way, you can all read what it does. Sounds good. Sprint. Uh, increase your movement speeds by 70% for 8 seconds. Stop stop saying Plink, chat. Uh, it's increase your movement speed. Okay, cool. We all know what Sprint is. And then everyone gets Roll. Very iconic monk ability. Everyone could... Dude, roll is just a great ability in general. Like, every class would feel better with roll. Cloak of infinite potential. You'll also be able to earn an artifact cloak that gains permanent power increases as you play. Power you earn on your strongest character is shared with alternate characters created for the event to make leveling even faster. Oh, that's sick. Love... I love anything like this. I don't know how much people are going to want to go back and play their alts during something like this, but I can imagine, like, definitely wanting to try different roles, maybe, if it's, if it's enjoyable. Uh, or maybe you're doing it to farm extra stuff, but like, yeah, just big, a big thing that I feel about WoW is that every time you do something on an alt ever, it should be significantly faster than what you did on your main. Leveling to max level, although in something like this, the leveling experience could probably be the same, but like actual leveling, gearing, it's a, it's a crime right now on live that your alts don't have a significant crest reduction for upgrades or get significantly more crests for doing the same content your main did it should just be faster why not but yeah anyways they're good they're doing that here good job uh okay so cloak grants the aura threads of time be woven permanently increasing its power okay and then time runner's advantage your cloak gains you the following stats oh so when you level like the second time once your ma once your main has like a giga cloak your your cloak will earn up to all of these meaning you'll level hella fast because you're super strong and also uh, you're gonna gain a shitload of experience too. Sick. Dude, I, I, dude, I seriously think something like this should exist at least for leveling and retail. I think it's just good. Okay, let's see. Earn titles, a variety of mogs, previously unreleased color variants of old mounts, and more simply... Oh, people are gonna be mad about this. Real mad. Recolor? No. Every time you make a mount, it should be brand new. And more simply by completing wow remix misopendaria specific achievements during the remix event uh these achievements will become feats of strength when the events end Woohoo! yay welcome to the new bronze age there's no such thing as a bad drop and any drop you get can be converted into new currency bronze you'll be able to use this currency to purchase upgrades and world of warcraft account bound cosmetics head to a bazaar in any zone and purchase oh we'll, we'll look at this on the ptr Actually, it probably isn't up yet. Uh, head to Bazaar in any zone to purchase everything from class transmogs to mist mounts, toys, and more. This allows player to purchase items that were previously unable to obtain or difficult to obtain as random drops by simply spending this new currency. So currently, I'm actually really mad um, because they're releasing rewards for something that they're making. And what if I don't want to do it, right? I feel like I should be given the rewards by default, right? Very similar to the Plunderstorm criticism. Uh, okay, so... Players won't be able to use the auction house in the World of Warcraft remix Miss Pandaria. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, continue the story for... Actually, I really like that. Uh, continue the story in Dragonflight as the Darkheart content update ushers in the final chapter of the expansion and sets the stage for War Within. Wow. What are the comments? Are they bad? Please tell me people aren't mad. Actually, no, I, that should be the comment, right? Is people should be like, why are you making rewards for content that I now have to do? <laughs> like the Plunderstorm stuff, right? Let's see. Oh, I like to look at this. Oh, wait, it's happy. Oh, boy, this looks neat. Oh, my God. Dude, the fucking forums are happy. So you're splitting up the player base again. <laughs> yeah, dude. Let's just not do any of this cool leveling through the zones and the raids thing. Let's just all be max level Dragonflight characters. Woohoo. That would be way cooler. Yeah. Try the check the WoWhead comments instead. Yeah, I probably will. Let's see. This sounds amazing. Like an in-season season of discovery and retail. Looks good, guys. Fucking awesome. Oh, dude, people are so happy. That's nice. I don't understand at all, but seems cool. I love how this level 12 Void Elf monk decided to comment this instead of just thinking this and moving on. Like, that's fucking insane shit. I don't understand at all, but seems cool. They just fucking, they just slammed it. And they have 6,000 posts. Holy fucking shit. 9,000 posts. It looks like it'll be fun. Oh, wow. Okay, very, very, very... Uh, very, very positive. All right, let's check Wowhead comments. That'll be good, probably, right? Oh, 225. Here we fucking go. Fix the damn game <laughs> instead of adding new modes. Oh my god, this is so good. Okay, this is literally the fucking first comment. They should just fix Mythic rating instead of... God, dude, people on Wowhead are just fucking insufferable, man. <laughs> what is it? I, did, I You can guarantee that person doesn't play also. Yeah, it's extremely high likelihood for stuff like that usually. Good for people who enjoy these things. 
I, for one, couldn't care less for Plunder Storm or whatever this will be. I really hope they don't add good things in there as rewards for retail servers to incentive. <laughs> Dude. So basically, Chromie time. Is there... How long until you get a single one where someone's like, this is cool? Bro, this is actually like the fucking most desolate place on the internet. There we go. Good on Blizzard for trying new stuff despite people hating every single move they make. Well, I mean, if you read like comments on Twitter right now, even on WoW's official post, if you read WoW forums, if you listen to anyone that's an actual human giving an opinion, this is universally positive and good. It's just like fucking, fucking internet weirdos that I get. This is like, this is like WoWhead forums or WoWhead comments have become like the 4chan of WoW discourse. This is just where all of the absolute worst people are in one spot. <laughs> Dude. I've actually never seen it this straight up. Oh yeah, can we, let's see some of the rewards. I, I think we know what we're going to see with the rest of those. What did that guy even mean by mythic rating is broken? No one knows, man. He probably just heard a streamer say it one time and he's just, he's just, he's just repeating it. All right. Uh, okay. So we've read this now available for download and, and we'll log in the PTR for a second. Cause apparently they've made some like UI updates as well. So the Pandar Pandaria remix scheduled this Friday. Okay, dude, I am going to be live on Friday, Friday through Sunday, bro. I might goddamn cancel my weekend plans or something like this is, I'm just going to be doing this all weekend, multiple classes. I just can't wait to do this. Oh man, it's not confirmed, just in-game calendar on PTR. I mean, they said it's up for, I, so typically Blizzard likes testing things over long weekends on the PTR. They've done this with dungeons, Mythic Plus dungeons, the whole expansion. Uh, I, I foresee this being like exactly the same thing. I, I would almost guarantee that this is actually going to happen on the weekend. But also it's weird. Like they did, they did no internal testing for, or no, no external testing for Plunderstorm. And this is like kind of like PVE Plunderstorm, but not really. I think it actually would be cooler if they just released this when it came out and no one could just like, I don't know if people really care about Realm First achievements and shit, but so people don't just like spend every weekend this is available testing it, but actually just like getting good at it before it actually comes out, you know? But like, this seems like a bigger undertaking than Plunderstorm. So I don't know if it would be feasible to do that. Like basically, the people who are going to like play this all the time on PTR are are the vast, 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 vast minority um, that play uh, WoW, right? And like, would having those people go on there and do it all the time ahead of time, but if that meant that they got more feedback and it was a better quality product for the 99% of people that are just going to play it when it goes live, is that worth it for those 99% of people? I mean, I, I like just saying that out loud sounds like yes, but I don't know. For me personally, I think it'd be really cool if it all came out at one time and there was no testing. I mean, in a perfect world, they it's not any better from external feedback and you just release it then. But like, that's also like literally everything that's ever been released ever would be slightly more high quality if it had that. So data mine class changes. Let's look at these. Okay, this is pretty big. So reaping your soul reaper, scourge strike, festering strike, and death coil deal 30% additional. They respelled additional. Very huge buff for DKs. Um, nothing there, nothing there. Oh my god, this is this is a wow head post. Holy shit, is this a wow head post? I I wonder if there's a single a single point of useful information in this whole thing. And I bet it got so many clicks. Just nothing. Just 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 like <laughs> that's so good. Realm first achievements returning in patch 10.2.7 time running Pandaria remix. So this is really interesting. I imagine they're doing this because realm first achievements still existed in mop like profession ones leveling to the first to whatever level that was on each class. Um, they removed it in retail though. And the only reason I could imagine they removed it in retail was because people were upset that they didn't have it. Like it was too exclusive, like getting realm first achievements was too exclusive and people didn't like that other people had them. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense, right? Uh, that kind of tracks with how WoW fans react to a lot of things. I want to see, let's see. So Realm, oh wait, so there's only two. So participated in the Realm first defeat of Garage Hellstream on Mythic, He mean, they mean heroic. Uh, unless, unless you can do all the heroic raids and then there's an extra hard Mythic version that has no rewards and it's just for hell. Ooh. Oh dude, that's so cool by the way. Realm first mythic garage reward title paragon of the mist shout out paragon dude wait siege was mythic well okay that's true and not true so when when it was first killed it was 25 man heroic and 10 man heroic but in the pre-patch for wad when they did mythic you were able to do siege of orgrimmar mythic but only once it was deep in farm so that's that's a little 
inaccurate to say like that was the first mythic like it, not really so yeah i mean so maybe it will but i mean yeah i don't know this, this is wishful thinking my wishful thinking is they have like you level up doing the normal raids and the dungeons and stuff i think that all sounds really cool and then you get to max level and you do like the heroic raids and then it's like oh wait you guys thought you were done if you want to just whatever we just hey we put like a way harder version of this on mythic and then you can do it if you want and obviously there can't be any rewards to it because adding rewards to things that people would actually have to do to get them is uh doesn't really work in today's uh wow um okay remember that time running realms will likely be separate from existing ones during the event time running characters will be available to existing realms after the event you're you're all right let's see uh any comments to this wowhead comments so big l wow huge l there's a reason these toxic behavior inducing type of achievements went away oh my dude wow guys guys listen if you find it normal when you hear information about wow under any circumstances to go to the wowhead forums and give your opinion you have got to work some shit out in your life like something's got to change you just got to like look at yourself in the mirror and just be like tomorrow's a new day and i'm gonna stop doing this shit because you are just fucking living in hell for no reason uh we're planning to open wow remix mist of pandaria for testing on the dark heart ptr uh starting friday april 12th at 10 a.m uh we expect to conclude this test on sunday at 10 p.m during that time, all Pandaria Remix will be available to test. Level 10 to 70, all Pandaria Zones, Normal and Heroic Scenarios, Normal and Heroic Dungeons, LFR, 10-player Normal, 10-player Heroic, Mogish and Vaults, Terrace Fellow Spring and Throne of Thunder, LFR, Normal, Heroic, and Mythic Siege of Orgrimmar. Wait, there's no 25-man, or they're at least not testing it. Am I reading that right? I mean, that's fine. Or maybe maybe it's just testing, but uh, I mean, they're doing Mythic for this. It says all Pandaria, good. Why would that be good? You have the option to do 10 or 25 player heroic. Why would it ever be good that 25 wouldn't be an option if it was back then, if people want to do that? <laughs> I mean, fucking good. <laughs> all right. All of the progression, including the Cloak of Infinite Potential Spell Gems and new itemization. Uh, let's see. Be sure to check out all the cosmetics available at your local Infinite Bazaar or found in every zone. Okay, there's much more to be completed in one weekend, but during this testing period, we'd love to hear how you feel about tuning rewards and, of course, if you run into any bugs. Okay, so this is really interesting, though. I do want clarification from Blizzard, if possible. Maybe I'll send a tweet, a tweeter. But I, it says it says this will be available to test. It doesn't mean they're testing all of it, but the fact that it is only 10-player for these raids instead of 25... Didn't they, didn't they say in, like, the previous post, 10 is good? No, no, okay, guys, it's not like you're choosing... So in, in Mists of Pandaria, you could do 10-man heroic or 25-man heroic. There wasn't, you didn't have to, no one's taken away a 10-man. That that existed in Mob. It's whether you would be allowed to do both like you used to. It doesn't affect you at all if you're planning on doing 10-man for 25 to exist. Did 25s get better gear? Uh, I believe 10-man dropped two items per boss and 25-man dropped five, I believe. Or was it four? I don't remember. It was a long fucking time ago. Uh, yeah, it's the same item level gear, too. It's not, it's just more gear. It was six. Oh, yeah, so you get, like, you get slightly more gear per player in 25-man, but it's, like, pretty negligible. So, like, players in 25-man were usually considered more geared, but that's because you would funnel loot to the, you know how gearing works, right? Like, it makes more sense to funnel loot onto the same person rather than spread that loot out, uh, because how scaling works. So, you would have people get, you could get targeted with more gear in 25 man right like if you're the warrior that's getting all the plate gear in a 10 man and the warrior that's getting all the plate gear in a 25 man there's just literally more gear coming your way but like across the whole raid it's the same or similar uh i want to see so i want to see if they specifically mention 25 man or 10 man heroic in here what is it i feel like 10 man rating is boring like i feel like a raid is more than 10 people now there's other games who do less than 10 players and have raids that feel like raids i mean unless you're saying for your opinion like a raid is when you have a bunch of fucking people and like that fits your theme of a raid which totally makes sense but like in today's day and age there's definitely a lot of want and need for uh for smaller group size raids because the most important thing in a raid is having a group of people that get along and probably the most important have skill parity meaning that they regardless of how good it is it's roughly similar to each other anytime you have players that are way better than the group or way worse than the group it's like a big problem usually uh and it's way 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 and and have similar schedules and it's way 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 easier to do that with 10 than 25 or 20 right that's why people like 10 mans uh and you can make really good raid content with less than 20 people for sure um okay uh next i just tuned in what are we looking at oh wait golden elegon mount I imagine that's not going to be rare like the original Elegon mount was. That'll have to be like permanent drop or like a way you can... A piss serpent? <laughs> a 
piss dragon. Yeah, the astral piss serpent. Love that. That is what it will be referred to for the rest of time. Are you cooking a race for this event? Um, let me workshop that in my mind real quick. So how would that work? We all get to max level. We don't do anything on the PTR. And then we like go live, do a charity raid and race to do all the raids, Echo vs. Liquid. But then people would have already had it cleared because we'd have to wait for them. I think it's probably not going to be a thing because PTR exists. And the idea of like the world where both of us practice this every weekend it's available to get perfect at it and then do a race is like the most unfun shit ever i feel like it'd be way more fun if it was like us both doing it for the first time because i promise you there would be a lot of wiping if they made it challenging because like some of these bosses are very specific and unique and at least our guild almost no one in our guild actually did these raids and even if we did it was fucking 10 years ago so don't remember how any of it works or what it does really like you remember main mechanics but you don't remember how you progress that fight so i don't know could be a fun idea to do it live but I think it should be really weird, like, because we have to, if we have to wait for them, for their servers to come live, someone will have already cleared it, and then, like, kind of the hype for that is gone. Ooh, or, or, they all buy NA subs, and they just do this when it comes out on NA. All you need is a sub, right? That fucking, that sounds sick. But then again, it's like, then if we do that, we would feel obligated to fucking, like, unironically practice this shit, which, like, that's fucking corny, you know? But like, if they're gonna practice, then we don't want to show up and not care. We did that for a couple of uh, we did that for a couple of charity races where they practiced for it and we didn't. And it was like we felt like we had to care because our fans were, are not our like their fans were like, you guys fucking lost. And it's like, okay, well now I wish we would have fucking come on. Just you two agree not to practice. Yeah, but then like other people, <laughs> I just don't, maybe it's just not a thing. I don't know. It seems like a for fun thing, but it also would be pretty hype, dude. I just want to get my piss serpent. <laughs> I just want to get that piss dragon, baby. <laughs> I see c -Dude tweets. This is really weird, and I have a lot of questions. Yeah, because if you're a PvPer, you probably feel left out of this. I actually feel that, because this seems really sick, but, like, as far as I can tell, there's no, like, level 70, like, battlegrounds or... Like, dude, I think, like, some... Ba just literally letting people play the battlegrounds that existed back then could just be fun for a couple days. Zero effort. It wouldn't be balanced. Who cares? PvPers got Plunder Storm? See, that's the thing. I don't agree with that. I don't... I don't see... Plunderstorm is a PvP thing. I, I fucking love Plunderstorm. Hate WoW PvP. I know tons of people that don't WoW PvP and love Plunderstorm. Seems pretty universal. But, like, I, some people will definitely see it that way. Like, PvPers just feel left out of this, while PvEers really enjoyed Plunderstorm. It is, it, it does, it does go to show you, though, that, like, and we talked about this on the podcast recently, but basically no one will ever universally be happy about anything in WoW. Like, people play this game for such different reasons and different versions of this game, like almost standalone versions of this game that don't always interact with each other. And anytime they make a really good piece of content for someone, there will be a lot of people complaining that they wish they weren't, weren't making that content and making content for their version of the game. Oh, like, Plunderstorm's awesome. Oh, you're making Plunderstorm? Well, it's not for me, so I wish you would make content for me. Oh, this mop thing? Oh, there's no PvP in this? Uh, well, that's, this isn't for me. I wish you would make content for me. And then there's just, like, there's a loud outcry of people who are mad about everything. And it, it does raise the question of, is it possible for Blizzard to create something that is universally liked because it's so separated like that? Anyways, we saw what, what was testing, and I need to wait to, until I hear back from Blizzard for that. Oh, we'll see with them pets and mounts. Let's see. Okay, little crazy-looking deep-sea-looking fish, bitch. The Alliance Wolf. Wow. Old God Fish. Horde Night Saber, Goblin Surfboard. Oh wait, that's actually sick. This is definitely sick. I feel like the rest of these are kind of mid. The the surfboard's sick. Uh, Baby Naga. Okay. Baby Yak. Oh, look at him. And then a statue. Okay. Raid Buff Scrolls returning in patch 10.2.7. Time Running Pandaria. Re so this is probably exclusively because 10 Man exists. Like when when asking Ian in an interview about like raid buffs in this game currently and i pointed out how there could be some groups in heroic raid for example that only have 10 players or maybe they have 15 players but a few of them are on the same class and they actually can't get all the raid buffs and he said that heroic is not tuned for really needing most or if any raid buffs it's mythic where we kind of expect you to get that and the reason raid buffs exist is so you actually see class diversity instead of eight of one class or you know if there was no raid buffs for example you would just see people being brought because of how defensive they are or whatever, right? Like, it at least means that there's a hunter in a raid. Well, except Ellie Shamans are hearing this and want to die, but uh, yeah, for everyone else in the game, there's like a spot for you, right? But if 10 mans are the hardest version of the content, then like raid buff scrolls are more necessary like they were in BFA. Uh, so definitely makes sense. Uh, so, and hmm, I think it's definitely an argument and maybe a podcast topic is even though all of that is true, 
Would the game be better if these scrolls existed and a better version of drums existed? I think so. At least in Mythic Plus, uh, the buffs have too big of an impact. Uh, okay, so even Chaos Brand and Mystic Touch will be getting scrolls. That's only... Uh, so, like, basically a Demon Hunter's version of Chaos Brand is 25% better than this. Uh, but, you know, you're getting a decent amount of the effect. Um, Timeless Scrolls of Battleship. Same thing, Chaos, Fortitude, Intellect, Mystic Power. I'm that's the Monk thing. Yep, it's one of the weaker buffs anyway. Uh, okay, Timeless Touch, Scroll of the Wild. What is that? It's 2%. Okay, so a a mark a druid bringing Mark of the Wild is 33% better. Or no, sorry, 50% better than uh than having the scroll. Get on Demon Hunters. Your value over your scroll is worse. Dispel? Wait. Used my item Timeless Scroll of Cleansing? You can get a scroll that on a 30 second cooldown can dispel someone? That is really interesting. Uh what? Wait, I'm so I mean, that's fine, I think. That's really interesting. It's basically giving everyone in the raid a 30 second to spell. Maybe it's healer only, but if it's healer only, why would it be healer only? Right? Like healers have dispels, right? Uh, this isn't supposed to be some crazy super balanced thing. I actually kind of fuck with this. Kind of interesting. Uh, oh wait. No, it is. I thought it was for non-magic effects, but it's curse, magic, poison, and disease. Uh, resurrection. Wait. Name change from resurrection to scroll of resurrection. Cast time change from 10 seconds to instant. Brings... Wait, so you're getting battle res scrolls? Oh, cannot be cast in combat. But, like, outside of combat, you anyone can res and it will be instant. Okay, fuck with that. Scroll of Resurrection, same thing, we just read that. Uh, and then Scroll of Summoning. Begins a ritual that creates a summoning portal for three minutes. Summoning portal can be used by allies to summon a... Dude, no need for a warlock. So this is interesting. I understand this. Not needing the raid buffs from certain classes makes sense. Not needing a warlock for summoning. We've never really fucked with that before, but that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, also, rest and piss, warlocks. This is what you guys get for never clicking your own shit. You know what I mean? Um, but the 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 decision to add scrolls of res and the ability to dispel is super interesting. Like they almost intend for some people to do this with like less healers or more. It's like enabling that. That's really interesting. Um, like I guess if your healer leaves, you're like, oh, well, we can't do this now because there's a dispel. And it's like, okay, well maybe we could just use this instead. Don't tell JB. I mean, this is just like meme content. He he just cares in like content that's actually competitive. He's a competitive guy. Doesn't matter here. Good meme though. Um, these new scrolls still list that they require their original class to use, but we believe it's likely a tooltip error. Yeah, for sure. I mean, why would you, why, yeah, I mean, of course it's a tooltip error. Why, why would a thing that allows you to give yourself the ability to get a worse demon brand be only usable by demon hunters, right? Uh, I wonder how you acquire these when the auction house doesn't exist. You can probably just find them. You'll probably just have if maybe someone in your... Hey, does anyone have a dispel scroll that they got while leveling? Oh, yeah, I do. And then they do that. Or maybe there's a vendor. Yeah. Or you can buy with the new currency. Yeah, true. Awesome. So far, very happy. Summer fun this Pride Month in the trading post. New data mined swimwear. And... Oh, my God. I just perfected my mogs recently, too. Jesus fucking Christ, this is going to be lit. More. Please tell me... Oh! I... Guys. Guys. Depending on how you view this, it will either be good or bad, but like my, is it called warbands? My warband picture on my start, on like my login screen where it shows my top five characters or whatever is going to be the most lit thing you've ever seen in your life. It's going, it, 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 it will like a, a painting of it will be in a fucking museum one day. It's going to look incredible. My characters are going to look so fucking dumb. They locked comments on this article. That's, that's, dude, shout out Wowhead. Shout out, that's very smart. Like, just judging from how miserable these people are in the comments about everything WoW related, if you're just gonna make something that includes Pride Month in the title, maybe, maybe just don't give those people an opportunity to type things, right? I'm pretty, pretty sure we know their takes on this. Okay, we've also found likely the pieces and costs associated with some of these models in the trading post. Max, did you just acquire lit to your vocabulary? No, I've been saying lit for years. What happens is I hear of Zoomers saying things, and then I'm like, haha, that's fucking stupid. And then I start saying it ironically with my friends, and then it becomes unironic very quickly. Uh, it's it's happened a lot. Yay. Dude, I can't wait to buy these. I'm going to buy all this shit. My characters are going to be looking crazy. Oh yeah, I want to log on and see the group finder changes. The UI changes are on the filter in Dungeon Finger. All right, let's go to the Dungeon Finger. The new season, Awaken... Ugh. God, season four stinks. Oh, filter. Oh, you can... You can make it set... You you want to only look for groups that need tank. Is this, this is new? 
Oh, that's really nice. I mean, that's that's this this is an example of baking in add-ons into the game that are like really fucking good. Like the group finder is infinitely better with add-ons, and that becomes less of the case here. You can specify your language, you can specify the dungeon, and wait, no monk already? Oh, I see. Because I'm a monk, that I see that. I thought it was so funny that there was specifically a monk option, but I was like, oh, that's because that's me. <laughs> Got it. Just every class sees monk. All right, no monk in there? Fucking get me in. Fuck monks. Dude, there should be a no moonkin option. I only want to see groups with no moonkins in them. All right, cool. That's nice. I'm assuming there's nothing else, though. Dude, what a what a time to be alive. This Friday, it's going down. That's good, because I can't stream tomorrow anyway, because I'm doing a commercial thing. And then I have two hockey games later. But on Friday, not a single hockey game. Saturday, I do have one. But I'll probably stream, like, all day every day on both of those. Max, do you think this removes the possibility of a MOP Classic release? Um, no. I don't think it removes it, but it is interesting. It would be interesting to, like, do a basically full rerunning of MOP on retail, and then just a year later do it, but the slowed down version. Like, it definitely... Does this existing remove some hype or some player base from mop classic when it is released seeing that it's going to be probably within a year of this coming out or a year and a half i think the answer to that is absolutely yes right it's like you're getting the TikTok truncated version of of it why would you do the long version again for sure damn so dude i haven't thought about it but i don't think it removes the possibility but it it's a question to ask for sure but mop class design yeah mop like mop will be different for sure and they'll probably still do it but it is an interesting choice like i think it absolutely will remove people from it though max so is this remix essentially modern wow played in the mr missa pandaria expansion like yes and no like it's not like you're logging on to your level 70 character right now you're going to be using completely different gear that's specific to the event with a bunch of wacky power bonuses the way you obtain and get better gear is completely different it has a completely new resource that isn't like really anything that exists in retail and you're going to be leveling from 10 all the way to 70 by doing content instead of doing like regular questing content so it's like for sure very different but yeah i would say it's like just a just a hair it's like it's like more like wow than plunderstorm is but it's pretty separate uh, my theory is that they'll do it for Legion next expansion, Max, which is why they chose the neutral name Remix so it can be reused. Yeah, see, now this is something that they could do multiple times and it would always be cool. Like, if they did this next expansion, people would be looking forward to it pretty much no matter what expansion it was, right? Wad Remix? Bro, Wad, Wad Remix would go fucking hard, man. Like, the only problem people had with Wad, uh, uh, maybe some lore stuff I'm not quite sure of, but I think all the lore stuff just, lore stuff just kind of kept falling off after Wrath because nothing could equal the Lich King, but, like, Wad had fucking awesome raids and dungeons, so there was a huge content drought in Wad, but guess what wouldn't exist in a thing like this? That, right? So, uh, it would be sick. Bro, leveling is boring. How many times do we have to level? I wouldn't really look at this as leveling. Like, leveling is something... So RPG games have like an obsession and, and a rightful obsession with like feeling like you're progressing multiple things at a time. And basically what you're playing this patch for isn't to level your character. What you're doing is experiencing all these things and you're leveling alongside with it. You'll be doing raids to level, right? Uh, but like, and there is a goal of hitting max level and it's to do the heroic raids, but you only get there by doing all the stuff by speed running the expansion up to that point. And you collect a bunch of cosmetics and power up your guy and all that stuff. So while you're experiencing the content, you're going to be going through character progression, gear progression. You're going to be gaining new talents along the way. You're probably going to have the current Dragonflight talent tree, right? You're going to see what it feels like to actually get these things at low levels. Um, you're going to be getting gear and you're going to be doing the content and leveling all at the same time. It's actually kind of like a speed run into what makes an RPG good. It's really good reward progression on top of just doing content you're revisiting again. The level 70s convert to retail in the war within yeah but like and those but those account those of rewards are all applied to your account so like i don't know maybe you'll play that character so i mean you could actually i mean if you wanted to level more characters to max level this would be the most interesting way to do that but i think viewing it as leveling is like kind of missing the point what is it it seems like they need a way for people to do old content now we have classic versions that are temporary and retail versions that are also temporary yeah but i think they're all good though like, I think people are going to love this. I think people are going to love... I actually, again, kind of similar to Plunderstorm, where 
again, Plunderstorm might not be your thing. You might have hated doing Plunderstorm. You might have felt like you had to do it because of rewards, but I still don't really get that. But uh, whatever. It is inarguable. Like, Plunderstorm is unbelievably fucking well-made. Like, extremely, extremely well-made thing. Uh, especially with no testing externally on it. Um, this looks... Like, if you were to ask me how to do this, I probably would have come up with a way worse version than what this looks like. This is not the Pandemonium, is it? Oh, it definitely is. Like, this thing? The time-running Pandemonium? That's exactly what this is. Why did they change the name? I don't know. I don't think this was ever announcing the actual name of this. They were just kind of hinting at what it was going to be. Like, if they typed WoW Remix Mista Pandaria, it would have been kind of obvious what it is. There's more more data mining? WoW. Let's check. Oh, Pandaria Remix. I see. Uh, raids. Raid Finder Mogish and Vaults. Raid Finder Heart of Fear. Heroic Mogish and Vaults. Rewards Bronze Cash for all this stuff. Okay, Heroic Greater Bronze Cash. Heroic Siege of Orgrimmar. Salasis Warband. Shah of Anger. Nalak the Storm Lord. Okay. Yeah, so no differentiation of whether you do 10 man or 25 man, but dude, I'm really I'm really interested in there being 25 man. Like I could see the argument for not bringing back 25 man heroic that like they just want to tune one version of this and have one version be really good. And if the, if they choose if they had to choose one or the other, I think choosing 10 man is the correct choice for a small form content like this. I don't think Mythic should go to 10 man like in live, but like they're them doing 10 man hero would be great if they had to choose. Very simple. Like, if you guys remember why they made Mythic, it's because 10 and 25 man difficulty was super variable, and it was really hard to make content for both sizes, so they committed to one size. That was a historically good decision. Uh, so maybe they're committing to one size to make sure the difficulty is on par for this. Like, they wouldn't want one to be significantly easier than the other, and maybe they just pick one and they pick 10. If you're going to pick one, picking 10 is good. I just, I want them to clarify if 25 is going to exist, because it did for all of these raids. No 40 man, please. There, yeah, there was no 40 mans for this stuff back then. This is basically Season of Discovery for retail, is it not? Uh, n no. I don't think so. It's not like Mop, but hey, Mop, it's super different. It's just, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. It's close. It's close that it has, like, gems instead of glyphs, I guess. More like classic than Season of Discovery. I don't think it's really like either of those things. New post. Okay, waiting. Wait, Murloc backpack and onesie dip, bro. The backpacks alone are gonna do so much for the Mog. Crazy. Those are in the shop. Yeah, smart by them. They will be they will be obtaining my dollars for every single one of these things. Okay. You can put a fucking chicken coop on your back? Dude, it's as if Blizzard is making these mog choices just for me and no one else.